Music is perhaps one of the biggest passions in my life. But who doesn't love music, right? Now, wouldn't it be awesome to be a professional singer? I know, like, for me, that's definitely one of my dreams in life. And that may seem like a far-fetched idea to you, but what if I told you that you could be a famous singer no matter how good or how bad you are at singing? It may sound crazy, but there is a device that can make that possible. It's been around for many years now, and it's helped out a lot of artists. Does anyone know what this device is called? Yes? Auto-tune. That's right, it is called Auto-tune. So allow me to show you how Auto-tune got its start, how it rose to popularity, and how it's regarded now in music culture. But first, I, I will open you up with a shining example of what Auto-tune is. Yes, that was indeed a baby crying on auto-tune, because internet. So, auto-tune actually came from a geophysicist of all people. Well, and of course, here is the device itself that it comes out of. And this device was created by a geophysicist named Andy Hildebrand. And there he is pictured there. Now, he, in the 90s, had a device that could find underground oil deposits via sound waves. And as the story goes, at a dinner party, a friend of his asked him if he could use that technology to help her sing. And that was simply an offer he couldn't refuse. And in 1997, Antares Audio Technologies got its start. And that's his company, and they sold producers Autotune. Now, with how Autotune works, and here is a picture of that geological process I was talking about. So essentially how Autotune works is that you sing into the device and the device actually fixes the pitch you sing based on a preset that you put into the program. Like say you sing a little bit higher than the note you want. If you set that into the system, the uh, software will actually fix it for you and you'll have perfect pitch for every note. And to exemplify that, I have a video of Neil deGrasse Tyson going through the process. Yeah, I sing. In the nebula of my soul. Okay, no, I'm not great, but now. So that's before. This is the key of C. There's Andy the himself. Pieces of my voice, up in pitch or down. Justin coaxes me into two. It took several hours. How well did it work? You be the judge. Our love was like a supernova. So you can hear the before and after, to, like just to get an idea of how the effect works. And as they kind of described in the part of the video, it just kind of takes the pitch you sing and fixes it. It automatically tunes it. Now, when most people think of auto-tune, they think of the video of the crying baby. It's a very robotic and metallic uh, voice, but that actually wasn't the original intention, and that's not what people usually do with auto-tune. I mean, for the most part, it's just that subtle pitch correction. It's not supposed to be an obvious thing. It's just meant to fix the mistakes that singers make. So, auto-tune was at first a well-kept secret among music producers. They kind of didn't want to go public with what was going on and that the software existed. But that changed in 1998 when an artist called Cher, named Cher, released a song called Believe. And that song features the robotic auto-tune styling, and there's another picture of the software. So there's Cher, and I will show you a clip of the song. that it features that robotic tone that you will hear. So you can hear like the glitches. So there you go. It's, as like Cher herself is actually 
a very well accomplished singer. She has been in the business for decades now. She has a very awesome voice. But as the story goes, um, the producers essentially put the effect on her voice kind of as a joke, but she liked the tone so much that they kept it and the song became a hit. And so, whether for artistic purposes or for pitch correction, auto tunes became a uh, regular thing in the music business. And I mean, it's pretty much in every genre. I mean, it's in rock, it's in pop, it's even in country songs. Artists even use auto tune live to fix their live vocals. Essentially, if you've listened to a radio in the past decade, or if you've like listened to the music that Messiah plays at various events, you've heard auto tune and like at, at work. It's basically inescapable in most modern music. Now, the biggest artist in modern, like for the modern auto tune, is this guy right here, T Pain. He is famous for taking that stereotypical computerized voice and uh, bringing it to the masses. Cher kind of started it, but T-Pain definitely make it a ho made it a household thing. And from him, everyone else started using it, and now it's as big as it is today. And with an effect such as autotune, there's definitely going to be a lot of backlash. And that's definitely true. Many artists, such as Jay-Z, Death Cab for Cutie, and Christina Aguilera have talked about their absolute disapproval of autotune. And the people who dislike it have some very tangible reasons. I mean, the effect can make the untalented successful in music. It's kind of like musical steroids. Uh, it also gets rid of the human element in singing by making that robotic voice. And imperfection is basically what makes us human. And, but to other people, the autotune effect is a really nice tone and they feel it's very artistic and they enjoy it. So it's very interesting how polarized the musical community is on autotune and it's rather unclear to see where it'll go. So whether you love it or whether you hate it, autotune's played a major role in music for over a decade and beyond. From the underground oil finder to the Cher Effect, which was a title given after the Cher song, to an R&B staple and then pop music staple. It's gained many fans and many haters. And it is simply my hope that you all know more about how it works and exactly what impact it's had on music.